Hello guys, welcome to our channel once again and today we are going to talk about a very exciting feature which has been released by Microsoft and that is called change feed connectors or the change data capture which has got its uh, um, support in Azure Data Factory though it is all available only in the mapping data flow so if you are planning to use it outside that then it may not work and very similar feature is already available in the data bricks uh, that is called auto loader i have already created a dedicated video for it you'll get, get you the link for that you can go through it and this is probably the competitor of that so if you don't want to use data bricks for auto increment then you can use this and this has been very uh, i mean there has there are a lot of use cases where user want to capture only the change data and they have to use a lot of custom coding for that they have to maintain the metadata they have to maintain the uh, the logs of when it was last pulled and based on that make a lot of uh, coding so this feature is definitely going to help them in reducing the uh, uh, errors and the problems which they would have faced earlier and in very simple two or three steps they can achieve it so what I think which we are going to or we are planning to cover in this session is like okay how we will see how the change feed control works how we can configure auto increment uh, load then we, where will you use it right if you are doing the change data capture that means you are moving files or the data from one place to other place so definitely you are not going to uh, copy the file as it is you might perform some kind of cleaning or the transformation right uh, when you are doing all these things, there are again some limitations with the change feed connectors. We will see how we can overcome that using the delta lake table. We can use delta lake table as a sink. This is again a new feature, um, uh, not a new feature, but uh, uh, ADF is going to add more and more support for delta lake tables, right? So we will see how you can make use of upsets so that you don't uh, get into the duplicate rows, right? So we'll try to cover all these things. Uh, I, this video might become little longer, so be, please be with me. You will definitely learn a lot of things. So let's not waste a lot of time and let's start. So I've just listed down few use cases here, though it's not limited to it, but it's just for the demo purpose. So we'll have one source which is actually continuously getting new files. What we are trying to achieve here is as soon as a new file is added, our uh, IP line should automatically be figure out that which is a new file and should process that only, right? So this may also happen that your source is only adding new file which happens probably in say Kafka or the streaming kind of scenario. But there are also cases where you might see that the source file got updated, some of the existing file got updated. And if you have that kind of scenario, the plain simple uh, change speed may not work and you will have to apply some upsets also. So we will see that also. Uh, at the same time, we will move the file from raw to created with some transformation as we talked about it. So very quickly, uh, I will show you diagrammatically here. Uh, we have a source where you are, you are getting a CSV file, keep on getting new new file. We want to configure an ADF to get it to the next layer. Now let's jump into the demo. So guys, here I am in my Azure Data Factory and I am assuming that you are aware of the very basics of the mapping data flow. And this is one of the, I would say, simplest mapping data flow which you can see just to give this demo. So I have a source file. Now it's the its data set is a CSV file which is in my lake again uh, i'll show you the lake location this is going to be my uh, source which says it's in my uh, branch container change feed is a folder uh, sorry this is out folder this is my in folder right now i don't have a file uh, i'll as part of the demo i'll keep adding it so what we are expecting here is when we add a new file there it should move to my out folder this is going to be my out folder and in between what i'm doing is just a small transformation we are doing is uh, if a file I have say three column ID name and address if the address is empty I just want to put a dummy address there right, before I move it to sync now let's go ahead and see it now so what I'm going to do uh, okay so before I start the demo I, I should tell you uh, what is the difference between your usual uh, copy which you do or the source which you add for data lake and in this one so there is very small thing which we need to do which is in the source option if you see here there is one extra properties added which says enable change data capture right 
and it also says read all files in initial load that means if the first load it will not have any bookmark or the timestamp right so the, that time it should read everything what it finds and after that pdf maintains a timestamp or the bookmark whatever you want to call it for you right uh, this is a great feature because otherwise you will have to maintain the uh, the dates somewhere else and then you have to pass it on it's not that it was not possible earlier it was possible definitely but now they have made it simpler so this is the only change which you need to do now let's uh, upload my file i'll upload it so i am uploading one file which i am saying one.csv i'll open and show that also so let it upload so this is my file it has this three column uh, id name and address i have c three or four records and first one address is empty so that we can add it right now my file is added now i don't have anything in my out file what i need to do is i'm going to run it now another thing here important is that uh, for the testing purpose what they have done is uh, during your debugging session it will maintain a separate timestamp of the bookmark when you deploy it it will restart, it will reset, it's not that whatever you have used for your debugging will not interrupt you, so that is again a good thing. Now I am starting my uh, data flow. Okay, so my run is completed, now I want to see my files here. I'll go here, refresh, I should get one file, now I want to see the uh, data here. Right? So I am going to use my uh, database notebook for querying purpose. Yeah, now you can see in my out file, if I query my CSV file, I can see uh, the ID 1, which was empty, right, address. Now we have got a dummy entry. So this, this is the first one. Uh, now let's go ahead and move to the second step, which is the important step here. Right now we didn't do anything, right? Uh, you have seen my data flow, there is no custom coding. We are not maintaining any incremental timestamp or anything. I'm just simply uploading a file here. Right. Now I have uploaded. Now I'm going. I'm just rerunning. Now my expectation is that it should not insert again whatever file we have already processed. Right. So that record should not get duplicated, or that file should not be copied again. The only file which should be copied is a new file. If that happens, that means that that is what we wanted to achieve here. Right. So let me refresh. And meanwhile, let me show you the second file. So this is the second file which I uploaded. It has ID 516. Yeah, now we can see it has already come. Now you see uh, there are only six records. Four of them came from the first file and the rest two came from the second file. So this is uh, actually the power of this new feature. Uh, however, there are some limitations. What if my file, the existing file gets updated for some record, then what will happen? So let's try that as well. Now I'll go ahead and I'll modify this. I'm saying allow to, and I'll go ahead. I'll re-upload the file one. I need to say overwrite, otherwise it will not upload. Now the, my file metadata would get changed, right? So um, there are not too much of uh, documentation available at this point, but I'm assuming that it. This works based on the metadata of the file. As soon as the file uh, create data or modified date changes, it, it considers that as a new file. It does not go and check your row. So if you are thinking that it is going and checking row by row and it's going to do comparison for you, so that's it, that is not it is doing. It is going basically only by the metadata. And that we will see it now. So guys, by the time it is running, yeah, I think it is completed. So let's see. Yeah, so it is completed now. You can see. Uh, let me rerun for you. Uh, it has duplicated all the rows as we expected because. We have recreated the whole file, right? With just one change. Now you can see one, two, three. These are all duplicated. Though one has got a new value because the new file has a new value and the old file already had them a different name, right? So if you are expecting this kind of scenario where the old file may 
uh, get changed, then do not use it in plain simple way. Now we'll move ahead for our second use case or the second scenario. How to handle this? So guys, this is my uh, second data flow which I have created. This time the only change which we are doing is uh, the sync we are making a change from a uh, parquet file to delta file because delta is something which allows you to make an insert and update right so so side we are not making any changes source remains as it is because uh, we want to make use of the change feed connector right it's the same thing now in between what we have to do is uh, we have to create a lookup a lookup to my destination in this case my destination is delta table now here uh, let me show you a few things when you use a delta right so delta has to be used with inline it is not supported as a data set so you need to select inline as a source type then select a delta and then again the link service has to be the delta link here slight confusion even i had when i started there is something called azure data bricks delta and there is something called delta as a, a file format so if you go to your usual pipeline activity copy activity uh, you can choose sync as Azure Databricks Delta, right? But that Azure Databricks Delta is not supported here. Here, what is supported is a Delta format which you can create in your data lake itself, right? So, right now we are going to create a, a Delta table or a Delta format file in the lake itself. So, here let me quickly show you this is the link service uh, for my lake as usual. And let me show okay. Here you don't have to do anything, but one thing you have to do here is uh, the source option. So, here we have to tell that in which path we want to create our delta table. So, this path is my change feed uh, slash out. This will be my delta table path. Let me show you. Uh, I hope I have cleared it out because uh, it is doing some testing right now. Nothing is there, right? So, this is going to be our destination right now. There is nothing, and the same thing is in the same because once we have done the first load in the, from the second load onwards we are going to do a lookup so lookup will be done based on the id column right uh, and then whenever you want to do upset you will always have to add an alert oh sorry alter rows the alter rows what it will do is it will put an actually an index or I would say the flag when you want to do insert when you want to do update so in this case what we want to do is because we have already done the lookup the source to if source to dot id if that is null that means it did not find a matching record i want to do an insert and if it has find a matching record then you want to do the update so that is what this alter row is doing it is defining whether it's an insert or update and you're seeing again it's the same delta uh, you have to go with the inline right have to provide the same path here and you will have to say allow insert and update because we are going to do both so let's go ahead and start it but before we start uh, what i'll do is i'll reset my source right because we are using the same debuxes and uh, i'll just delete it and i'll re-upload it this time uh, our sync is going to be the delta let's go ahead and upload the file Now I have one file here and this time I need to trigger a different pipeline and this pipeline is only to execute the data flow. I hope I have done the right setting, let me just verify. Okay, so this is my source. Uh, let's go ahead and trigger it. Think, yeah, succeeded. Let me go to yeah. so now you can see all the files are created, right? Here you notice the uh, underscore delta underscore log, which is the log file for any delta table. Right? Let's go ahead and uh, do a query. So, before querying, what I'll do is I'll just create a delta table on top of this file. So, and there is one specific uh, video for this if you want to know more about the delta, how you can create the delta table, all the countries, and how you can query the time travel. You can refer that now. What I have done is I have actually created a delta file on top of my uh, folder. So let's go ahead and query this table. 
yeah so this is the output i'm just trying to compare with my file so it is exactly same and this time we have not done that training part of it uh, which we performed earlier so that's why you see address as now so we have got four records in the delta table now our next thing we want to do is go ahead and upload a second file uh, okay, before we upload a second file, we need to have something which is going to change, right? Then only we'll be able to test the upside part of it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm adding another row because ID 1 is already added. So, this 2 is going to be a new row and this is going to be the updated. Once this is done, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll do it. So now it is completed. Now let's go back and see. Uh, this should have got updated again, but we cannot rely on the files. We have to actually query it. So let me quickly query this. yeah now this is my result in the delta table now you can see there is no duplicate right you can see only one two three four which was coming from the first file five and six came from the second file and one we had recreated right if you can see here uh this is one ashok earlier it was uh i think aloku yeah aloku name has got changed and one more feature i want to show you here from the delta table is you can actually query the previous version uh, I believe I'm in the second version, so let me query the first version of it. We can clearly see the difference. Okay, so it was a zero version, the first version that we created the delta table, right? Now you can see the in the uh, version of zero, we had all of two, now it got changed, right? So this is how uh, we have seen that how you can make use of absurd delta lake and with very minimal code we could actually achieve an incremental file load which which uh, which i mean i get questions from many people how to achieve this and how to do all this thing and with the addition of this new feature i think this will make life easier for many of the developers so with this uh, uh we can conclude the with this demo and please if you like the video subscribe and share the like put your comments if you are using it and if you are trying this if you get into some trouble please let me know in the comments. We'll try to resolve. Thank you. Thanks a lot for watching.